This is a battle between something Germanic and something other Germanic. Something Germanic is commanded by Agony Persian Prince and something other Germanic is commanded by the Inquisitor of Agartha. Ooh, the Inquisitor has a very interesting army. The Persian Prince has brought his... Uh, you've seen this army a lot with a few minor differences. But Inquisitor has vanilla Germanic horse. Let's see. Inquisitor of Agartha has vanilla Germanic horse. Then he has um, a Germanic noble scare general. He has one Germanic crossbow. He has six Germanic archers. He has uh, six noble Germanic swords and a total of six Germanic horse vanilla. For the Persian prince, yeah, we have his standard stuff. Upgraded Germanic horse, summations on the flanks. Uh, four archer center together with the general gotcha. and some pikes But in this particular battle um, Oh, there are not there are only four G noble Germanics and two uh, Noble Swebby swords noble Swebby swords of course much stronger And moving in shield wall it seems like Interesting maybe they want to tough out some arrow fire These Noble Swebby Swords are kind of a special unit because they only have a 14 charge bonus, very low melee attack, but very high melee damage and uh, very high melee defense, good armor, good health, uh, peculiar, definitely a peculiar unit. Because such, I mean, their, their melee attack is very, very low. And like the Sarmatian, if you look at the Sarmatian Warband, 57 melee attack and then these guys are running around with uh, elite swords and uh, 32 melee attack So a bit of a weird unit It's like it can't really decide whether to be a defensive unit or an offensive unit and moving this close to Lurtz uh, The Prussian Prince is taking a significant amount of fire And he's doing a very good job here in stopping the charge of this Germanic horse uh, he, he is he is caught though, but then he's able to counter charge and he should have no problems dealing with the vanilla Germanic horse over here of uh, Lurtz. That should be a breeze for the Persian Prince. Now he could... I don't know why uh, Shield Wall is still being used here by Lurtz. This is an invitation to get charged by cavalry and indeed he is going to be. Cavalry smashing in and... Just, ooh, this hurts. Very good cavalry engagements here by Lurtz, by uh, the Prussian Prince. And for some reason, these uh, Germanic horsemen of the Prussian Prince, probably due to massive fire and getting charged, are starting to waver. Over here, the Prussian Prince easily winning. Uh, he should be able to do well here as well. The Noble Swebby Swords, that's 900 straight out of the window because mainly because of uh, cavalry charge over here as well a nice cavalry charge was uh, was performed by the Prussian Prince just fire incoming from all angles here this is a very very chaotic battle the Germanic horsemen here will die of uh, the Germanic horsemen of Lurtz and, and still these noble Swaby swords are moving around in shield wall so a peculiar choice to use uh, peculiar choice to use shield wall Offensively like that. I mean sure they are going to do exceedingly well in shield wall But that doesn't really <laughs> That doesn't really help when they get charged to pieces and aren't able to join the blobs So yes shield wall is a good ability, but when you need to rush into blobs not optimal at all they are getting a lot of kills here, but the problem is that only 40 men in the unit. But still with 40 men in the unit, they are doing massive damage. The frustrating thing though is that uh, Noble Swebby Swordsmen have the same... Uh, they have the a less smaller bonus versus infantry than your standard uh, UR Warriors. And the UR Warriors always carry it with them on their Kanda Sword. And some people have asked about the Kanda sword and the historical accuracy of the Uar warriors. 
And the Uar warriors belonged to what's called the White Huns, and they lived in, or lived, they, they had a seat of power in Central Asia, where they came into contact with Indians, Northern Indians, and they used, um, used the Kanda sword. The Kanda sword has been used extensively for quite some time. It is, from memory, it's uh, mainly a chopping sword with um, a double-edged double uh, chopping sword that is, uh, can deliver some pretty nasty cuts. Not entirely unlike a Viking uh, single-handed sword, however it differs in that it, it um, has sort of a... Uh, it's, instead of having an elongated uh, point it it sort of has a um, uh, sort of a wedge uh, at the end that is makes it a bit heavier and a bit more lethal I think when cutting. So I guess that's where the bonus is supposed to come from that it's a dedicated cutting weapon, but still a very very peculiar choice to give them that bonus. So yes, the the Uar warriors, the Hun, uh, the Huns did use infantry, uh, did use infantry extensively in sieges. It was just that they, uh, the Huns weren't really big on huge pitched battle, um, line infantry, massive infantry formations. They weren't uh, really huge on that. That was not their forte. The forte was mobility, deception, attrition, uh, scare tactics, and those things are very dangerous to, or very hard to work if you have a huge infantry force that isn't very mobile. So, but the Huns did use, um, did use infantry from allies, they did have their own infantry, they were entirely capable of fighting on foot, uh, but as for... Uh, as far as being the best infantry, having the best ready. infantry, of course, I mean, they didn't. Um, but then we come back to the the question of game balance. And um, yeah, the balance in Attila is completely screwed. But if the Huns didn't have Uar warriors, uh, they would, if they didn't have Bosphoran warriors, Bosphoran infantry, they would be 100% unplayable. Now they are mostly unplayable. Uh, they are a horribly decide faction, just a terribly decide faction, but still. So, enough ranting, back to the battle. This has, uh, this has devolved into a huge, <laughs> huge massacre of everything that isn't an archer. General oh, the general of the Prussian hands. prince is uh, dead now, and uh, he doesn't, again, he doesn't have a lot of uh, units left, a lot of melee units left, he doesn't have a lot of cavalry left. He has been using his cavalry very aggressively in all of the battles we have seen, perhaps a bit too aggressively, because uh, although he has gotten some great, great charges off, it has also gotten him into range of a uh, significant amount of enemy archers and enemy infantry. So, so uh, although Attila is very much about cavalry, it is also about supporting that cavalry properly. And I think uh, what the Prussian, <coughs> what this army of the Prussian prince sort of suffers from a bit is, is the lack a of. The lack of offensive power in terms of having these pikes, for example, and um, not being able to follow up effectively enough against it's sort of a, a mix between skirmish and rush. Very strong flanks, hold the center, skirmish a bit, uh, and, and it's a very effective composition, but against some against particular armies and even though Lurtz did a lot of weird stuff in this battle uh, the Prussian prince still ends up still ends up uh, losing this battle even though he got the better engagements to start off with so valiant defeat there by the Prussian prince and the Swerby swords did get a lot of kills even though they were moving in shield wall uh, in this battle, though, I think the main difference was, uh, let's see, uh, k the kills here. Yeah, the cavalry, the Prussian prince does very well with his cavalry. Um, but Lurtz, uh, they deployed the exact same number of troops. Lurtz wasn't, uh, I mean, Inquisitor wasn't able to get his money's worth out of his Germanic crossbowmen. Um, 
But some of these archers do exceedingly well. The infantry does a fairly decent job. But I think it w it came down to some of the Prussian princes' units uh, routing before uh, before the units of uh, Inquisitor. If you look at the units of Inquisitor that are sort of off the field here, they have a bit more men, uh, a bit less men le remaining than the units here of uh, of the Prussian prince and. The investment in the crossbowmen, I don't think that was worth it at all for uh, Inquisitor. But the, the the build ended up, the army ended up winning. He had three more skirmishers than the Prussian prince, and he had less infantry, but he had these noble, uh, these noble swebies. But where the Prussian prince used his cavalry against the infantry of, um, of uh, Inquisitor, Inquisitor was more defensive with his cavalry, and I think that's a smart choice when you only have vanilla Germanic horsemen. Strength and honor.